Okay, so in this tutorial, I want to give you a basic introduction to animating with JavaScript. Now, most of what I'm showing you has nothing to do with HTML5. In fact, you know, you've been able to do this stuff for years. Back when I worked at AOL around 2000, we were doing this stuff. Uh, back then, it was called DHTML, uh, but it's essentially um, animating DOM elements around using JavaScript. And this tutorial is not going to focus on canvas but again rather animating dom elements like divs and things like that so i just have a a basic uh, template here for an html page html5 uh, web page and um, i'm going to be using textmate for this but you can use anything that you want any text editor um, and let's go ahead and first let's put in an element that we can actually animate so i'm going to create a div and I'm going to make it 200 pixels by 200 pixels. And we'll give it a background color of blue. Now, an important thing if you want to animate um, these items around, as, at least in this case where it's the only thing on the page, I'm going to put position absolute. So that when we give it an, a left, a left and a top, which is essentially X and Y, um, it's going to actually animate, um, you know, over the page. And lastly, let's just give this an ID of box. Okay, so there's our element, and let's just go ahead and make sure that we see it. So here, I'm just using uh, Safari here. So here you can see our div element that we're going to animate. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to create an init function that gets called once our page is loaded. Because it's no, if I just put code up in the script tag, um, it, it's not going to know yet what this box actually is. So we need to wait until the page loads. So we're going to respond to the onload event. And we're going to call the init function, which we're going to create up here. So I'll say function init. And basically what we want to do inside of here is to store a reference to this box um, because you know we don't want to constantly be saying document get element by ID and things like that. So we're gonna I'm just gonna create a var up here and I'll just call it b. And then in our init function, I'm just gonna say b is equal to document that get element by ID box okay so now our we can anywhere in our code now we can just use B in order to reference this box okay so we're gonna need a few other properties so we're gonna do flash style easing animation again I want to make keep this as, as similar to flash as possible so Usually when we're doing that, if we're doing, say, random animation on X and Y, we need a destination X and a destination Y property. So let's create that here. So DX, and I'm going to set that equal to math.random times 600. And I'm going to do the same thing for destination Y. So this is going to give us, uh, right when we come into the movie, a starting point to animate towards. Now we're not going to directly animate, so the, there is no X and Y property on this div. Um, we need to actually set the left and top properties, which are essentially the same thing. Um, but we're not going to animate those values directly. We're going to create two uh, properties, I'm going to call them X and Y, which we're going to animate. And then we're going to use those values to set the left and the top of this div. So I'm going to create var X equal to zero. And then we'll also say Y is equal to zero. Okay, so now we have these properties. Now in our init function, we basically now want to call the function which is going to handle our animation. Now this is one area where this is new in HTML5. Like typically in JavaScript animation, you would use a either a set timeout or a set interval, um, and you know uh, take a thousand and divide by sixty to get sixty frames per second. Well, there's a new feature called request animation frame in HTML5, and this basically has the browser handle all of this for you, and it's gonna to 
you're going to give it a function which it's going to call um, up to 60 frames per second. That's the target. Um, but basically, the browser optimizes this. So, for instance, if you go to a different tab, it's not going to continue animating. And basically, you you let the browser optimize how uh, these animation frames or each frame is called. So we're going to we're going to create a function which is going to be called every time we get a new animation frame. And I'm going to call it move it because we're going to move that box. Let's just go ahead and stub that out. So I'm going to say function move it like that. So inside of this function, again, we're, we're going to be doing our animation. But we need to have this called every time the browser gives us a new animation frame. Again, that should be 60 frames per second. So the problem with the request animation frame, like most things when we're dealing with uh, browser compatibility, at least right now, is it's a, it has a different name, at least until the, the spec is finalized and, and things like that. So Paul Irish, who's a um, evangelist over at Google, has created a nice little helper function. And I just have a snippet here, which I'll, I'll put in. And basically what it does is it creates this um, function called request anim frame and this function actually will use request animation frame or if you're on webkit webkit request animation frame mose opera microsoft and so on and so forth now if request animation frame is not available so if you don't have an html5 capable browser it's going to return just a regular set timeout uh, function set at 60 frames per second so really nice little wrapper uh, helper class you can either just copy it here or you can go to Paul's uh, blog he, he has a, a nice little article on on using this so now that we've abstracted away the 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 browser specific stuff now to use this request animation frame is really simple all we have to do is basically we're gonna do our animation code and then the last thing we're gonna say is request anim frame which is essentially calling this function. Now there's two things that we pass. First is what function do we want to be called every time a new frame is reached? Well, we want it to call this function, which we're currently in. So I'm going to say move it like that. Now the, the second is we can pass an element to it, um, which basically says this is the object that we're animating on. Um, I'm not com completely clear on when you would use this uh, specifically. I guess you could have different um, animation frames for different objects, but I'm just going to pass in B, our box. Um, but in this case, it's not really going to matter what you pass in there. Okay, so this is now going to have... Uh, once we call this, it's going to now call this move it function 60 times a second when the browser uh, gives us a new animation frame. So now we can just go about our business doing our animation. And again, this is going to be very, very similar. In fact, exactly like we do it in Flash. So I have this X and Y position, which, is, which we're going to be animating. So I'm going to do a typical Flash style easing equation. So X is plus equal to destination X minus X. And then we're going to multiply that by uh, whatever value to determine our speed. So 0 0.15 is something that works good. So that's the x. Now we'll paste this in and do the y. So it's going to be y and then destination y and then y like that. Okay, so now this is animating these X and the Y properties, but of course that's not going to make our box move. We need to actually now apply this X and the Y value to our um, box and the way we do that is we say b dot style dot left this allows us to actually set the left offset of our box okay so now I'm just gonna say X now here's one of the 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 weird things is um, on certain platforms you can just say X on others you need to actually add PX so this is essentially a string value that you're setting, but you need to add pixels to it um, in order to get it to work on all platforms. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing for the top property. And for this is obviously going to be Y. 
Okay, so let's save it and let's see what we have. So there you can see we had our div animate. It only did it one time, obviously. So let's go back and, and let's uh, change that so it does it um, continuously. So for this, again, typical flash style code. If math abs x minus dx, let's do is less than one, then let's go ahead and reset these uh, dx and dy to new random values like that okay so now you can see we have our box nicely animating around in a random fashion so pretty simple there's, a, there's just a couple of different um, you know differences compared to if we're doing these types of things in flash um, one of them obviously being this request animation frame you can just kind of think of this as an enter frame event um, that the browser is actually managing um, uh, and again there's a nice using this is nice because again there's a nice fallback if it's not an HTML5 browser it's just going to use a regular set timeout now that we have this code now we can easily come in and let's say we want to instead set the width and the height you can just change those come over and now you can see we're actually um, animating the width and the height of this div element um, so again you can you know take this this little bit of code and here you can see if we wanted to have an expanding um, you know expanding div when we clicked on it or something like that so pretty simple uh, you know to do once once you uh, get the basics down and again using this request animation frame really this is the only part of this that's actually HTML5 um, the rest of it is just simple JavaScript DOM animation. But that's the basics of getting started with simple JavaScript animation.